Okay. 
most people previously believed to have died by ash suffocation. The results of the study published in 2010 show that, ex show that exposure to at least 250 degrees centigrade hot surges at a distance of 10 kilometers from the vent was sufficient to cause instant death even if people were sheltered within buildings. The people and buildings of Pompeii were covered in up to 12 different layers, in total 25 meters deep, which rained down from the sky for six hours. Pliny the Younger provided a first-hand account of the eruption of Mount Vesuvius from his position across the Bay of Naples and Misenum in a version which was written 25 years after the event. His uncle, Pliny the Elder, with whom the younger had a close relationship, died whilst attempting to rescue stranded victims. As Admiral of the fleet, Pliny the Elder had ordered ships of the Imperial Navy to cross the bay to assist evacuation attempts. Volcanologists have recognised the importance of Pliny the Younger's account of the eruption. The eruption was documented by contemporary historians and is generally accepted to have started on the 24th of August 79 AD, relying on one version of the text of Pliny's letters. However, archaeological excavations of Pompeii suggest that the city was buried about three months later. This is supported by another version of the letter, which gives the date of the eruption as November 23rd. People buried in the ash appear to be wearing warmer clothing than, than light summer clothes that would be expected in August. The fresh fruits and vegetables in the shops that were uncovered are typical of October, and conversely the summer fruit would have been typical of August, was already being sold in dried or conserved form. Wine fermenting jars had been sealed over, and this would have happened around the end of October. Rediscovery of Pompeii After the thick layers of volcanic ash covered the two towns, they were completely abandoned and eventually their names and locations were totally forgotten. The first time any part of them was unearthed was in 1599, when the digging of an underground channel to divert the river Sarno ran into ancient walls covered with paintings and inscriptions. The architect Domenico Fontana was called in and he unearthed a few more frescoes, but then covered them over again and nothing more came of the discovery. Fontana's act of covering the paintings has been seen both as censorship and as a broad-minded act of preservation for later times, as he would have known that the paintings of a hedonistic kind later found in some Pompeii villas were not considered in good taste in the climate of the Counter-Reformation. Herculaneum was properly discovered in 1738 by workmen digging the fan for the foundations of a summer palace for the King of Naples. Pompeii was rediscovered as the result of international excavations in 1748. These towns have since been excavated to reveal many intact buildings and wall paintings. The King of Naples, Charles of Bourbon, took great interest in the findings, even after becoming King of Spain, because the display of antiquities reinforced the political and cultural power of Naples. Carl Weber directed the first real excavations. He was followed in 1764 by military engineer Francisco La Vega. Francisco La Vega was succeeded by his brother Pietro in 1804. During the French occupation, Pietro worked with Christophe Saliacetti. During early excavations of the site, a 
fictional voids in the ash layer have been found to contain human remains. It was Fiorelli who realised these were spaces left by decomposing bodies and so devised a technique of injecting plaster into them to create, recreate the forms of Vesuvius' victims. This technique is still in use today, with the clear resin now used instead of plaster because it is more durable and does not destroy the bones, allowing for further analysis of the real bodies. preserved in the ash and now they've been brought back to life again I suppose um, and it's sort of fascinating to see all of those things and then it's also really sad when you come across the um, plaster cast of the bodies and, yeah, and it's, they're so real yeah, it's quite frightening just to it, it's some of the give an indication of a sort of human reaction to extreme heat, you know, they're sort of sheltering or crouching or they're protecting their loved ones, it's a, a really quite sad scene, but uh, I would recommend anybody who happens to be in London um, before, I think it's the end of September this year, uh, the exhibition finishes and all of the artefacts are shipped back to Naples. Um, Naples, Italy, that is. <laughs> Not Naples, Florida. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's, it's definitely worth going down. Um, it's a really fascinating part of history. I think the Roman era, just generally for me, I find it fascinating. I think the fact that they were so advanced. Um, you know, they had underground heating. They had uh, sewage systems. All the things that forgotten about um, and we all seem to go back to this sort of primitive age um, once the Romans were defeated and it's quite odd really that you know it took so long for us to rediscover these technologies and these systems that the Romans had in place you know around the time of you know BC basically it's uh, Okay. 